Thank you very much, Anthony from k Electronics in southwest Sydney here. We are a father and son duo. Awesome. They have a passion for hobby electronics and robotics, and we want to share that passion with students, hobbyists, and makers around the world. We've noticed some of your recent posts on Twitter that you use in the first version of the uh, PCB ITE. Yes, I am. There it is. I've been uh, using this uh, PCB ITE uh, holder system for years. It was sent into the mailbag. I don't know what, how many years ago was it now. But anyway, yeah, absolutely uh, fantastic system. Them. Like and these are a magnetic uh, base thing, and uh, and you put your PCBs in there. You can arrange it, of course, any configuration, and it's just great for holding PCBs. It's absolutely brilliant. But they've become the first uh, Australian distributor of the uh, Sense Peak. I actually didn't know who. I forgot who made them. It was just PCBite. Um, so it's sent the new PCBite kit, so you can upgrade your current set. Awesome. One large uh, PCBite, one insulation cover, four SP10 probe and test wires. That's what I'm interested in looking at. Because um, uh, uh, well, we'll explain in a minute. And uh, for 200 meg uh, hands-free oscilloscope probes, if you and that's the key, hands-free. You know that infamous third hand you always need in electronics. Well, this thing's going to help help out. Anyway, um, yeah, let's have a quick look at it and include a screwdriver set. Thank you very much, Anthony and Son. Awesome. So we've got four 200 meg hands-free oscilloscope probes. So it'll be a regular-ish uh, 200 meg probe, but it'll have um, support for literally supporting them um, for the hands-free kit. So let's have a look. There we go. Oh, we've got a mini grabber as well. That's very nice. So let's have a look at the kit. Yeah, because they sent the, these are, because these will be magnetic as well, right? So that'll go on there. And it's just, I'm curious to know how this works because this is just floppy. Um, I can't. <laughs> so if you buy the hands-free uh, probe kit, it comes with one of the uh, magnetic holders like this. So you've got your regular uh, 200 meg scope probe, of course, that'll plug into your um, scope. It's a fixed 10 to 1, um, which is great. Because there is no standard probe on the top of this. There's a little uh, right-angled micro coax. But anyway, it does come with a little head. Whoop, whoop. Oh, be careful with this. I just uh, I just lost the spare tip there. It does actually come with this brilliant PCB probe head. And there it is. Look, you can see that's how it uh, screws on. So that's going to screw on to the end of the holder like this. And then you've got little micro coax connector. Oh, I d it's obvious. Duh. Is that... Ooh, ooh, oh, damn, that's sharp. Um, yes, it does actually um, push in. Now, I... Just dull. I'm so dumb. I just realized why it's floppy as, because it has to be. Because, right, so you've got the probe like this. The whole idea is it doesn't, like, it's not supposed to stand up on its own. There's supposed to be some downward pressure so that this probe, which we can screw into here like this, these are brilliant. These are great. Oh, trust me, you're going to want to get one of these once you see it. Look at this. That plugs into the side, what? like that. There you go. And of course, you're going to have a little uh, ground attachment which you can plug into there and uh, hook over. And but of course, it you know, there's no point if it stands up on its own. The whole idea is it has a little bit of weight. It's just floppy enough, so it has a little bit of weight, so that when you put it down on your contact that you're probing, they'll, it'll just go in slightly. You can see it. Just going slightly in like that, not too much, but just enough pressure for that sharp point to penetrate uh, into your solder joint that you're trying to probe or your pin or whatever it is because, you know, you've got to get uh, past like the oxide coating and, uh, you know, you've got to have some sort of pressure on there. So that looks like it puts just enough pressure due to its own weight. Oh, that is, like, it's just gorgeous. And bingo, you've got yourself your third hand. So you could have four probes all hooked up probing stuff and you're completely hands-free just I ah this is worth every cent I don't even have to try it out in practice to know how good this is because like I've done sort of you know stuff like this before sort of like I've cobbled together stuff like this using regular oscilloscope probes and all sorts of like holders and things like that when you absolutely desperately need to you know hold a couple of probes on there and keep your hands free but you can actually uh, cobble something together like using, you know, whatever holder you've got, be it a pan of ice or something like that. And your existing oscilloscope probe, you kind of put it in there or one of those big uh, gooseneck type things. 
Yeah, here it is. One of these like gooseneck things. But these are ah, oh, these are stiff as. Look at that. You know, these are just absolutely insanely stiff. And you can do it with a lot of effort. You know, you can actually uh, you cl clamp your probe inside something like this, and you can get it in place. But it, it's just it's really <laughs> difficult. I've spent you know tens of minutes setting up our uh, probing solutions before, but this is just oh god, it is so gorgeous. Wow, nothing beats a purpose designed solution like this. That's just incredible. So here's the new one they've sent, and this is the original one. I think like it was a Kickstarter originally. That's where it, uh, it came from. But um, yeah, like the spring in these, wish this was feel vision but yeah, that's like, it's really gorgeous. Has it got the same? Oh, that's even, that's even stiffer. Wow, it's stiff as. What that is in there, is that like a plastic ring or something so it didn't like cut through because this was just uh, bare metal so in theory it could have like shorted um, stuff out so it looks like they've got some insulating sheets in there but yeah that's going to hold your board in place uh, not as high so like but it doesn't really I always thought these were a bit high so making them smaller I think's uh, I think's a winner but there's actually uh, two different types of probes supplied. I don't know if you get it with them or whether or not they're optional extra, but this is the SP-10, and the one we just looked at is the SP-200. I assume that's the 200 meg bandwidth one that matches it, hence, like, it's got a uh, shield on the top, and it's probably got, like, a f as that would be, like, a four-layer board. It's hard to tell with the matte uh, black, and then you'd have the uh, controlled impedance signals running on the um, inside of that. Yeah, yeah, it's not running on the bottom. That's all ground plane on the bottom there. Uh, what's this? Just a, like a lower bandwidth solution? Is that like a times one or something? And this is actually the times 10? Hmm. Yes, Dave. RTFM. The SP10 is a passive uh, one to one hands-free probe. So it, yeah, there you go. It's exactly, uh, but well, I'll demo it uh, in a sec. But there you go. There's the bandwidth uh, for those playing long and high. And what is it? Uh, yeah, 10. I'm you know, I'm, you're lucky you get 10 megahertz on a times one probe. I've done a whole video, um, the secrets of time once one probes revealed or something it's called. It's quite good even if I do say so myself. So yeah, there's an example of it. You have your board mounted up on your uh, holders like this, and then you just have all four <laughs> probes hooked onto there. And it's just <laughs> like, it can't be beat. It's absolutely, if you need this, you need it. You should have a solution like this. It's worth, I don't care how much it costs, it's worth every cent. And for this application, they're actually recommending uh, 45 degrees like that. I would have gone in a bit higher than that, um, which is what they show on the uh, other ones here, but it's totally dependent upon the application, how you set it up. You just need a bit of experience with it to know what angle is going to work best. Damn, that is sweet as. Look at that. They've got a custom made a uh, metal sheet for me, and that's a, a I don't, yeah, have they like screen printed? On that, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. That is definitely going straight to the pool room, i.e. straight to the uh, soldering bench. And that's, you know, it's it's a magnetic base like that. So is that a uh, non-conductive uh, coating on there, I assume? But I'm going to use it up like that because it's got the EV block logo on it. There's also another uh, sheet here. I don't know what's what. So that's obviously got an insulative uh, sheet, uh, like a surface on top, so um, I'm not sure what which one's actually provided with the kit. And yeah, these uh, little rubber baby buggy bumper holders here, they're obviously like um, spare, uh, they're like little novel clips like that. You put them over and you can tie cables together. That's, that's brilliant. All right, I'm gonna try my first attempt at this. So I've got the probe like this. I've got the uh, 200 meg jobby. Oh, it just feels, God, you can, it just oozes quality. You can just, I, this is not feel, I wish this was feel a vision so you could feel it. But anyway, uh, you've got a ridiculously fine pitch down here. It's like, you know, um, it, unfortunately, it, like there's nothing in this that's going to stop um, sliding between pins and potentially shorting out uh, pins on a ridiculously fine pitch part like we've got here. Like, you know, there's just like, it's not going to magically uh, solve that. Even though I've got my glasses on, I wouldn't like to use that without magnification, but that, that just holds straight in there. That just like, it, it's straight on and it looks like it's, I can even give that a wiggle, 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 yeah. I'm not, I, like I'm jiggling that at the top and that is not budging. That is not sliding off that pin. So even though in theory it's possible, yeah, so what I've got to do is actually get out my <laughs> magnifying 
glass and which is my macro lens and yeah I wouldn't like to probe something of this fine pitch without some magnification that's just yeah uh, but once it's on there geez yeah that's pretty good I can wiggle that and that ain't budging so that seems to that's probably at that 45 degrees so that seems to be a good angle like and the weight of that like it's not falling over it's not collapsing or anything so that's can I I can even bring it up like that and it hasn't I can see and feel it hasn't slid off the, it hasn't slid off that pin by me touching that wow that seems to be perfectly balanced I'm very very impressed by that so here's the manual have they got like it's supposed to be 200 meg bandwidth but I wouldn't expect uh see if they got any bandwidth plots no they don't but I wouldn't expect you know absolute stellar performance 14 to 18 puff input cap uh 200 uh, 3 dB down at uh, 200 megahertz so you know it's um it's performance is going to be like more than adequate for most uh you know general purpose users Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do, of course, is to actually uh, calibrate this on your scope as you would with any new probe. So we hook that up. We have a look at our vertical. There we go. It's a little bit roundy. So using the supplied adapter. And then uh, these are uh, termination adjust instead of uh, top probe adjust. Hence why they can get away with the uh, times one. Because if all, if all the compensation was in the top, anyway, yep, yeah, there you go. So no dramas at all. That's good enough for Australia. All right, I set up a uh, real probing example here. And I, I've only got two probes. Of course, you can go more complicated. I haven't checked the uh, data sheet for this chip here. I just, like, absolutely random example. But it looks like, like 0.5 millimeter pitch. And I'm probing two pins side by side. Like, this would be... You know, normally you would have to go in there and like solder wires on or uh, get some other attachment point at, at some other end of the uh, circuit on a larger chip or maybe some, you know, resistor um, somewhere or something like that. But absolutely brilliant. And you can see I've only got one of the uh, ground probes hooked up at the moment. I've only got it to uh, channel one here, but um, it comes with various adapters. So I've chosen the pin header one. And of course, it, I found a ground point over here like this. Ground is always going to be the hardest part of any uh, probing system like this. And you'll notice I've got no ground on uh, channel two here. So if we actually go over to the scope, here we go. Here's one I've uh, captured and we can probably capture that again. Here we go. Can we? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So you can see channel two is a little bit more loosey-goosey there. Look at the uh, overshoot and undershoot and then really fast transition uh, stuff like obviously happening here. This is one short uh, transition here because we don't have a ground on channel uh, two there. Our signal integrity is not that terrific. But hey, this often doesn't matter. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to see that something's happening there or you want to see, you know, timing relationships or, you know, something else between these. You can see that channel two is like a bursty uh, thing there. There we go. If we trigger from our channel one there, you can see that uh, there's nothing happening on channel two until, unless we get lucky like that. But anyway, yeah, you can see that uh, here's a you know here's a good difference between like we get some undershoot here but it's yeah you know, it's not quite as uh, vicious as what we've got on channel two here without the ground of course you can go in and add grounds and stuff like that so that's always going to be the hardest part of this solution but what I wanted to show you is that this would be like you know it took me like less than a minute to set this up this would be a pain in the butt to set up if i had to probe these two signals side by side on this tiny little pin pitch uh package with regular probes i'd have to solder on little mod wires or i'd have to find another tap or i might have to like scrape off some solder masks for a track somewhere or something like like you know it really you could butcher your board doing this but you can see how nicely and these are relatively balanced like let's actually might be tempting fate here but let's you know it's like I'm, I'm wiggling that probe and it's staying on. Oh, you can't see it. Sorry. I'm wiggling that probe and that's staying on. That is, that is not, not budging. I'm giving that one a wiggle. So yeah, even if you brush these things, 
they, they you know, this seems to have just the right amount of downforce on it, the weight that with the spring tip on there that gets uh, right into the pin. And uh, because it's a very sharp point, of course, once these things get dull, hence they supply it with uh, spare uh, tips on it. Once they get a bit dull, it's going to be hard to see. I just bump that and no, nah, it's, it's, there we go. Look, I'm, I'm bumping my whole, bumping my whole thing there. And normally, you'd completely come a gutter on something like that with regular probes. There's just no way you can get in there with uh, just uh, like the dimensions of your regular probes. So this is uh, this is game changing. Uh, you've got to have one of these in your kit. Seriously, it's just yeah. When you need it, this thing will save the day. So there's no high frequency uh, ground adapter, the usual like little springy clip or something like that that goes around your regular high speed probe. But even then, to use one of those, you've got to have a nearby ground point um, anyway. So you have to like scrape away your solder mask, you've got to solder something into a nearby ground plane or something like that, just to actually make your high frequency uh, probe work. So, uh, you know, this has a similar sort of uh, signal integrity grounding limitations as your regular probe, but it just lets your probe stuff side by side and who cares about signal integrity when you can actually capture you know stuff like that oh there we go i got it see <laughs> and like you can just that's more than good enough so that's just fantastic for debugging oh look we've got a really that's a really short pulse on there on on channel one look at that look at that jobby wow what's that What's that time base? 50 nanoseconds. There you go that's like a uh, just over 20 nanosecond uh pulse there and it's doing pretty decently even though i've got this big antenna earth lead going over here like this um it's it's working just fine so from a signal integrity point of view this thing's as as good as you can expect from such a probing solution it's just this thing's going to find a pride of place here in the eev blog lab it's just brilliant i highly like as i said i don't even care about the cost you <laughs> need one of these it'll save you bacon and your sanity let me tell you oh the hair i've pulled out over the years trying to probe stuff like this oh did, no no oh where's the phone number for my psychologist so this new PCBI wireless probe thing gets two thumbs up and a big fonz. Eee.